Hi there, it's me, Gabrielle Polacco. I'm here with you today with another new video tutorial using a variety of mixed media products. I'm going to be using some TCW stencils I designed for them, and I'm also going to be using some Lindy's squirts and magical paints. Um, I'm also going to be using polymer clay for a really cool centerpiece that we'll be working on together. This video is slightly longer because of the extra little tutorial I have on the polymer clay. So why don't we just get started? I'll be using this pack here of uh, chipboard. It's by 49 and Market. It's a collaboration with Dusty Attic, my favorite chipboard company. Lots of really cool pieces in here. So I just took out the clock design and I'm just using that center piece and I rolled out some Sculpey clay and I'm going to be cutting around it to get the inside dimensions. I'm using just a blade knife to cut it out. Here I used a piece of paper underneath it so I don't ruin my craft mat. So my next step will be coming in with a stamp I'm using here a stamp I designed for 49 and Market called Herbaceous Stamp Set. I'm just choosing one of the designs and I'm going to be pressing it into the clay. Just a word of advice, I should have really put a little baby powder or something on the, or, or cornstarch, something like that, on the stamp first. It makes it easier to take it out of the clay. Um, but that's okay. I'm doing a lot of texturing on this so it, does, it doesn't really affect it so much here. But yeah, continue to just press in your stamp creating a nice textural design. And then next what I'm going to do is take a ballpoint stylus. Uh, basically it's like an embossing tool. It has a round point and I'm just um, tapping away at the flat areas with it to create kind of a pockmarked texture look to it. So my next step will be to add these glass beads or, or I, don't, I guess they're not really beads, they don't have a hole in them. They're um, like glass pebbles that people use to fill vases with for flowers. I have bags of these for some reason, but anyways, I'm gonna take about three of them and I'm going to lay them on my centerpiece of this project. But first what I'm doing is putting a little bit foil underneath it because I find when you put the pebble directly onto the dark clay, it doesn't reflect as nicely and I feel like the putting that little mirror finish underneath really reflects the light nicely. Now normally I would glue that down so that um, it, everything adheres well but because I'm going the next step I'm doing will kind of encase the pebble I'm not too worried about it sliding around. So my next step is I've rolled out some more of that clay and I'm using little round cutters to make just little holes all over the place. Um, different size. I think I had three sizes there. You could always cut them yourself with a knife or use your stylus and just move it around to get your circular designs. Um, so what I'm doing here is just removing the circles and I'm going to cut an odd sort of shape as you can see here. Um, careful not to cut your craft mat when you do that. Um, I'm also using my stylus to make some of the smaller holes. Uh, and then once I feel like that piece is ready, I'm going to lift it and just lay it on top of my beads to kind of encase it. Once I have the polymer clay placed the way I want it with, you know, bits of the beads poking through, I'm using my stylus to tap little dots tap it right into the bottom clay. Um, I'm also creating more texture on top of that whole sheet that I've applied. Um, this design, I've seen something very similar on um, Pinterest looking around and uh, so I can't claim this for my own design. I believe somebody named Mandarin Moon might be the creator behind this one. <laughs> I've seen a few people use it, but I think Mandarin Moon might be the one who came up with this idea. So I want to give credit where credit's due. So here I'm just plastering it down with that little stylus, putting a little texture in it. I'm also creating a few extra holes with my stylus where I see fit.
and again here I'm adding another extra little piece to encase this bead as well and again just tamping it down with that uh, stylus and giving more texture to the whole surface of it. So my next step is to add a few more textural elements to my design. Here I'm creating kind of like a snake design. I'm just rolling out another piece of the polymer clay and I'm just going to use my stylus to put a little bit of texture again onto that piece. Um, when I'm done with that, I'm just going to wind it on top of that one bead that doesn't have a lot of polymer clay on it So, because I don't want to completely cover the beads either. Uh, so I'm just going to add that in, swirl it around, whatever looks appealing to the eye. And finally I'm going to roll a few little polymer clay balls in different sizes and put them in little clusters around the beads. Uh, I didn't show it just because it was kind of blurry that section. I didn't want to bother you guys with that. Okay and so then once I'm done with that I'm pulling out some Perlex uh, mica powder. I'm using a gold color and I'm just applying it here. I'm applying with a paintbrush but it almost fills everything too much with a paintbrush. So I decided to go with my finger instead and rub it on. Um, you can see how nicely it just picks up the top surfaces and uh, gives it really nice contrast. But um, the areas where you can't get in with your fingers, you have to use your paintbrush to get into it. But I'll just sort of let it stream here as you watch it sort of come to light. I almost forgot to mention that you need to bake this clay when you're done. Um, bake it at 275 for about 15 minutes and then let it cool and you'll have a nice hardened centerpiece for your project. So now that we have our centerpiece done, we can get started with the main body of the project. I have here a box, um, it looks like a book that I bought from Dollarama. That's a local dollar store for $3, so it's a nice inexpensive base to use. Um, here I'm painting it with some black gesso. This one is by the Crafters Workshop. So what I'm doing is just covering the whole box with the black gesso except for the areas where I've taped off. So I've taken a moment to dry my gesso and my next step is to come in with some drywall tape. I have this roll here I got at a local hardware store. It's really a great way to add texture to any project. So here I'm just snipping it to fit my project and I'm going to use some Aliens glue. I'm just going to rub some on there and just press it into it. Some of the drywall tape I've had before has a slightly tacky back that makes it a little easier. Um, this one was a dry one. So I used a blow dryer to quickly dry my glue and once I have everything nice and dry I just go over that little piece with some more of the black gesso. Here I'm adding some corrugated cardboard. Now you can use cardboard from a cardboard box that you have lying around. Um, but then you gotta strip that top layer off or even a half you know, stripped and half not on could look really cool too. But this one was from a piece that I got um, in a craft kit. So I'm just gluing this piece down and then again I'm going to come in with my black gesso and paint that strip. I'm just going to continuously keep my background um, dark with the black gesso. A great way to add texture and interest to your background is using stencils. So 
Here I'm using a stencil I designed for the crafters workshop called Riveted and I'm using TCW black modeling paste and I'm just applying it in the sort of corner area um, both the top right and top uh, and bottom right sections and then I'm going to come in with another stencil once I've dried off um, that little area I just did. So here I'm coming with another stencil I designed for the crafters workshop called blueprint. Um, so just again, just go over it. You can use a credit card or you can use a palette knife like I'm using here. And uh, once you're done doing that, draw your project before going on to the next step. So we don't want to forget the sides and back of the project as well. So here I'm just bending my stencil, carefully holding it and rubbing the paste into it again. You don't have to have a perfect imprint. This is just to add some, you know, interesting and nice texture to the uh, spine of the book. And on the back I'm doing the same thing. Uh, here I'm going to use a credit card to spread it. I really like using a card because it gives a nice perfect flat finish. A palette knife sometimes can run underneath your stencil but I do like the effect I get with a palette knife. Um, and again I'm using the riveted stencil at the top edges and bottom edges of this uh, back of the book. I should mention that I do dry my stencil imprints in between when you see me laying one stencil on top of another uh, it's usually because I've dried it so it's not a good idea to lay it on top because you'll ruin the image underneath if it's wet so my next steps here is I'm taking those chipboard pieces and I'm just laying out a design um, I'm trying to do my focal point near the top um, and I'm just adding you know little rivets and screws and uh, the cogs and wheels. I'm just trying to figure out where I'm putting everything. Once I have that set in my mind, um, I'm going to glue it all down. And here I have this junk box of all kinds of odds and ends that I've had from other projects or things I've collected and I'm seeing if there's anything extra I want to add. Um, some ideas I discard here I've added a couple of Roman numerals and uh, you know just a couple of odds and ends and so now I'm going to adhere everything. Uh, I'm using this cement glue for the metal parts but the rest I've just used Aileen's glue for. So here you can see my project. I've glued it all down and it's ready for the fun part. So here I'm using Lindy's Stamp Gang. It's their Tibetan Poppy Teal Magicals. These are so amazing looking. When you add water and activate it, it's such beautiful rich color. And the shimmer really shows up on the black there. So here I'm just applying the paint around the edges and um, there's different ways you can do this. You can just activate it on the side like I've done here and paint it on and you'll see later sometimes I'll sprinkle just the powder straight onto the project and I'll spray it with my water and kind of let it just run into all the different areas. So um, you can experiment, try different ways of doing it. Here you can see I'm just sprinkling the powder on and then spraying it and just amazing how it looks when the water activates it, doesn't it? I just love the look. So for now I'm just concentrating on creating a nice color background for this project. Um, a new color I'm going to be adding in here is Lindy's Banff Blue Squirts. This is another uh, line of product by Lindy's Stamp Gang. 
This one is uh, like a liquid paint that's a thinner, slightly thinner than your acrylic paints. And it's nice because it really runs nicely into all of the crevices and creases we've created here with our chipboard and our stencil. So just continue to work in your colors and then we'll get to the relief areas. So every once in a while, I take a minute to dry what I've added to my project and then just start layering more color. Um, you can use layer more of the same color or add some new color to it as you'll see me do in a minute. So now I'm looking to add some warm tones to the project and I'm using Lindy's Maple Syrup Bronze Brown. Um, so that's going to add me some of that golden coppery shimmer. Um, this is subtle but it's, it's a very beautiful shimmer to it as you angle your project you'll see the, the lights hit it in a beautiful way. Now I'm Working on the relief area, so all the areas that are sticking up like the chipboard. But I'm going in with this bronze paint, but it's too thin really. It's not the right paint for this part of the project. So i using another color here, the Pentart Glamour Metallic Gold Paint. It's an acrylic paint, so it's thicker and more matte looking, but it still has a shimmer as well, a golden shimmer. And as you can see here, it just picks up all of the relief areas and really makes it stand out from that beautiful blue background. Uh, so you're just going to take your uh, brush and you're basically like dry brushing. You're not going in with a heavy load of paint on your brush. I tab it off a little bit so that I'm just, you know, hitting it with a thin coat of that paint because you don't want it to hit the bottom part where the blue is. You want it to just hit the top part so it really stands out. So you just want to keep working at it, hitting all of the top areas with the gold paint. Here I'm turning my project so I can get some of that corrugated card. You just want to pick up wherever you've put in textural elements so that they stand out from the background. And just keep working it. So now I'm going to adhere this uh, focal point for our project uh, onto the background and I'm going to use this heavy duty glue here for this because it's not really a heavy element but just to make sure it stays put. I wasn't using it for my other chipboard pieces because it does tend to leave little wisps and I didn't want to deal with that. Um, so now here I'm adding Pentart Creamy Acrylic uh, Paint in a color called Jade. Um, I'm just doing this to add a little bit of a contrast because I have a fairly dark background and I want to add just a little bit of light elements in it as well. So I'm going to just here and there add little splotches of it and kind of fade it into the background. Another color that works nicely with this sky blue color here 
is this orange slice by uh, TCW. It's a nice bright acrylic paint and I'm adding it in here. It gives a look of rust elements to the page. A good way to unify your centerpiece with the background is to add some of the color elements you used in the background. So you see me here um, adding a bit of the orange in, some of the blue as I'm working onto the centerpiece as well. And I'd just like to make a quick comment about um, our design here. Um, sometimes when people do these projects, they just cover the whole thing with uh, a million little pieces and things and you know it's a nice look um, because it's great and when you have a lot of pieces you get a lot of textural elements but it's always a good idea to keep it into certain tight clusters and then have other areas which are a little uh, less cluttered it's it's just more appealing to the eye and so now uh, as you see here I'm moving on to the spine of the book and again I'm just using the same paints and the same sort of techniques on the spine and you'll see I'll be using it on the back of the book as well. Usually when I uh, create my projects I like to put like a dark border of ink around it to create kind of a framework but in this case because my background is so dark uh, dark border wouldn't work so here I'm using gold and I'm using it to just lightly brush the edges so it gives that look of metal. You know if you hold something what wears down the most is the side edges and that's the look I'm going for here. So just again dry brushing, take the gold on your, your brush and just lightly brush the edges. So you don't have to do, uh, do a lot with the back cover, but I always like to keep everything pretty unified. So here again, I'm just sprinkling on some of the magicals and adding some of the Banff blue squirts and I'm just um, covering the whole background design, allowing some of that stencil design to shine through. And again, I'm just going to add here and there dabs of the gold. And now as a final color point I'm adding Lindy's Cattail Copper Brown Magicals and this adds a real punch of that bronzy color, kind of a copper rust look to it. And I, I really like the effect this has added and it adds that extra amount of shimmer as well. So we're almost done here. As you can see the box is finished with the painting and I'm just adding a final touch here. Um, some beautiful adhesive gems. This particular one is by Recollections. I believe I got that one from Michaels. Um, but you can use any gems that you have in your stash. It just adds that extra little bit of glitter and, and jeweled look to it. Um, and then your project is pretty much done. And uh, once you have added all the gems and everything, what I'm going to do now is just pull off that uh, tape that I've masked everything with so that it doesn't look sloppy. I like a nice clean look. And your project's done here. I'm just going to show you the box in its entirety. Uh, this was a really a fun project and I hope you guys enjoyed it. You can find all the products below um, as well as links to places you can find them. 
I hope you have some fun creating this one yourself. Thanks for watching.